This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Today, let's say we'll discuss about uh, HTML forms. Okay, what do you mean by forms? When you want to collect some information from the people visiting your website. Okay, or you may take a feedback from them about, uh, let's say, the experience in uh, let's say about the website or let's say in an e-commerce site you would like to accept the, the mobile number address etc so many details from the user so for these purposes we will be creating forms in html so when i say a form you can have a text box and you can uh, let's say prompt the user to enter the name address and then password or email and all this thing so you will be using a single line text box okay then once the user enters all the information and clicks on the submit button the server side program can read the value and process it okay so when i say server side program uh, let's say a language like PHP or Java or Python will be able to read the form data and process the information. Okay, for example, let's say when you go to Amazon or Flipkart and when you select some items and place the order, like you are keep adding all the items in your uh, okay shopping basket. And once you've finished your shopping, when you say, I mean, when you check out, when you place the order, so all the information, you'll every and you will be entering your, I mean, uh, the delivery date, etc., your address and everything, and you give all your preferences. Then, when you finally make the payment and checkout, submit, all the details will be stored in the server database by a server side program, right? Okay, now when you look at the different types of controls in a form, you have, let's say, the submit button, you can have radio buttons, check boxes. That is, when you want to give a, a set of options to the user and you want multiple selection, you can use check box. When you want to you have only single selection, you can create, let's say, radio buttons. Then drop down list. Okay, then field set that is for formatting the form then the color date okay text control password control there are a lot of controls more than 18 controls we'll start looking at the controls now Okay, any problem, you know, you all of you are able to hear, you tell me. Excuse me. Are you people able to hear what I'm speaking? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. If you have any difficulty, you just let me know. So because maybe some because of the some connectivity problems, sometimes it might arise you, uh, let's say, let me know immediately, right? Okay. Okay, now let's say input type. So when you say text box, a text box will accept a single line of text. So this can be used to accept names, okay, then your comments, okay, then, uh, okay, something uh, like, let's say, your age, etc. Then input type is equal to password. You would have observed when you type your password, the letters you type will not be displayed, right? In place of that, an asterisk character will appear. So when you're accepting any confidential information, which you don't want to be displayed on the screen, you can use select the password control then when you want to accept an email id you can use this email element and type is equal to number will accept only numbers okay now when you're typing the accepting the address of a person so yeah let's say you'll be allowing any type of input uh, characters numbers everything but suppose 
first let's say when you are accepting let's say your uh, something like the interest rate or number of elements age okay so your the input type will be number it will not allow any characters then check box radio button okay type is equal to hidden is used to hide the form field input type is equal to button okay so you can create an ordinary button and then there are two special types of buttons called as submit and reset which we will be looking at then input type as color file etc okay we will be looking at all these form controls one by one fine now let's say when i say okay you create a form preferably we will put a heading explaining what type of form it is See, it may be a registration form it may be a feedback form right okay then you will a form will usually have a heading and then all this control see here enter your name this is a label this tells you what type of information you need to enter into the text box which follows it and then enter your email address because without any putting this label if i just add 10 text boxes you won't know what to enter where so a text box will be always accompanied by a label right so the labels there is input i mean input labels text boxes these are all called as the form controls so the form is a container which holds all these controls together like when i i can create a multi-line text box to accept the address and i can add a color control to accept the color so the form is a container which will hold all these elements together Fine. So when I want to look at the examples for the form, like in an e-commerce or shopping site, you can accept different types of information. Maybe your personal details and your delivery address and your mode of payment. In case you choose to pay by your credit card, all the information. So they uh, let's say sometimes you may have to enter multiple forms in multiple details. So the form can be grouped according to the logical classification like personal details okay delivery details payment details etc now suppose let's say when you register you are applying for a job in a company okay through a website they might ask a lot of details your personal information so what is your let's say your name your age what is your qualification i mean like that then your qualification details might enter and might another form they may display your experience etc okay now so you can create these forms in html all the form controls with the buttons in html and you will be able to style these things using the style sheet using your css okay today we'll just look at how to create all this html controls and how to accept the information next class we will see how to style the form with css okay fine so we'll look at the form controls one by one so last class i showed you a simple example right first we look at the simplest of the form controls okay fine and uh, one more thing is today i'm not going to show you anything about styling we'll be just learning how to create all these controls then the form tag has got some attributes method it can be either get or post okay so you don't have to bother about it right now so now when i click on the submit but when i want to handle the form data in the web server then only you need to give this attributes so method how it should be submitted to the web server okay and then to which program it should be submitted all these things but right now we are not bothered about all that now let's say i let's say en enter the text name i just want to accept the name and the password from the user that is so i am creating a text control and a password control and these two controls let you okay enter a single line of text single line of input from the user 
and they have a attribute called as a placeholder you can give a text by default that text will be displayed in the text box okay and then when i say input type is equal to password the characters you enter will be hidden from the others so if somebody is sitting next to you they won't be able to see what you're entering so you don't uh, display the text as it is it will display some uh, characters like asterisks or uh, let's say bullets depending on the uh, operating system and the browser you're using okay now we'll look at the So here you see what is the code I've written here. Input type is equal to text. So it has created this text box. Okay. Then placeholder. So I've just entered your name. So indicating that your name should be entered into the text box. And then password. Then the next, let's say, given type is equal to password. Right. Okay. So these are called as a placeholder text. Right. Then I've created a button called as the submit. So when you write a server-side program to, let's say, submit all the values to the server-side program, the submit button will submit all the values you have entered in the form to the server. But right now, we don't have any such programs. Okay. So to create a submit button, you say input type is equal to submit. So instead of the value, the text you want to be displayed on the button. I can also say send. Or if you're creating a registration form, you can say value is equal to register. Right? So you can control the text that has been displayed. By default, it will always display the submit text. So you can change it using the value attribute. Okay? Now here you see your name. I can enter my name. So I say Uma. Then pass word so anything you enter will not be displayed okay so that is the difference between the text box control and the text control and the password control password control will also accept the text but the difference is the text you enter will not be displayed right okay now suppose let's say i want let's say the password to be let's say compulsorily entered so to make sure of that i can give an attribute called as required so when i say a form element it is required you you cannot submit it without entering anything into the form okay for example i'll reload the form i just enter the name i try to submit so it says please fill out this field so without entering anything into this form i cannot submit it to the server so when you want uh, for mandatory fields that is what you mean by mandatory field the user must fill up the data you can use this required element to make sure that some value is entered into it right okay write down any doubts you have have you understood about this yes ma'am okay write down finished okay i'll go to the 
next control so we have just learned how to create a accept a text and a password from the user okay let us look at the next example okay now in this example i just displayed the text boxes okay with a, a place holder text now it is it, whenever you display text boxes it is always better if you display it along with a label so every time let's say you can't be setting this place holder text right so what you can do is for the text boxes every text box you can add a label indicating what exactly should be entered into the text box so first you display the label then you can display your text box and if you in case you don't need the mandatory i mean this information place holder you can also skip it so since you're displaying a label there is no need for your text okay then here i have three different fields and i have added three labels so labels are the type of controls which is just used to display the text on the form right so to create a label we use the label tag and to associate the label with a particular text box you i add this for attribute for is equal to name that means okay when i create a text box with a id as name okay that says this label is associated with this text box right okay so and then the name so here i have given two different attributes for this text box one is the name and one is the id so the id is used to associate the text box with a label and name is given for the submitting the value to the server side now if i write a php program to process the na name data when you submit it with a submit button the name and the value should be will be submitted to the server so for that purpose we add the name attribute right okay so here in the id whatever you are giving the same id you have to give with the label the name and the id can be different for example i say id is equal to my name so label for i need to change it to my name right it is not necessary that both the id and the name should be identical okay fine then i have added a let's say there are two ways to create a label one is that is you create a label first close the label tag and then you can add the other control or what you can do is give the label tag give the text for the label right and then i have added the text box within this label in this case there is no need to associate because your input type is contained within the label so that is so it is clearly understandable that this text field with the name qualification is associated with this label so you can skip the for attribute if you enclose your input i mean your text input within the label tag right okay now and here you can give let's say the size is equal to 15 size is equal to 15 determines the size of the text box okay fine then i have added let's say this fast you can give the required attribute right you can give and i have added a button called as reset so these two are special types of button reset is used to clear the form data now suppose i have entered some information now i feel that the information i have entered is not correct i want to remove everything use the click on the reset button it will clear all the values you have entered right so reset button is a special button which uh, remove clears all the input values you have entered in the form see when i have 100 check boxes see when i click on the reset button all the 100 check boxes will be all the 100 text boxes will be cleared right and submit and uh, reset are the two special type of buttons okay which are used for a specific purpose clear right now
and all your form elements should be contained within the form tag. And for password and for the text box field, I can set the max length. Since I've set the max length as 10, I cannot enter the password by taking more, more than 10 characters. Okay, over. Next, we'll look at the email input. In the previous version of HTML, right? Okay, you didn't have this form input type as email. Okay, it is included in HTML5. So the, the form, I mean, this type is equal to email and then type is equal to color, date, date, time. These are all included in the new version, HTML5. So you can say you can also enter the email, okay, in the text box itself. So why they have created a new control called as email. See, this is also looks similar to your text box itself. So in HTML4, we were accepting the email ID in the text box and then we are validating. Now they made the, okay, the process of validation simpler by including this email tab. So lay input type is equal to email. So it, uh, let's say it lets you enter an email ID and if you enter a wrong email ID, for example, you know how the email ID will look, let's say you will have the an email ID followed by at and then gmail.com, okay, and then the domain name. Now, if I try to enter an invalid email address, okay, and when I try to submit, so it don't, it don't let me submit, it says, please fill, uh, fill out this, okay, I have uh, filled this out, and when I try to submit, it says, please include an at in the email address, right? So, I need to give this at character. So this validation is being automatically done if you give the type attribute as email. And if you simply say input type is equal to text, this validation will not be done by HTML. You need to write the code to validate it. Right? Okay. And when you're accepting email, input type is equal to email gives you two choices. Okay. In the first one, that is a simple example, input type is equal to email. It lets you type a single email address. Suppose I want to accept multiple email addresses. Okay. So you can give an additional attribute to this email. Right? So, and then uh, here you can say, Type is equal to email, you say multiple, you give this multiple specification. So it lets you enter multiple email IDs separated by a comma. Okay, so when you simply say input type is equal to email, by default it will accept only one email ID. In here, in this case, I can enter multiple email ID. Okay, at gmail.com. Right? Okay. Now here I have given the server-side program actionpage.php that is not 
uh, available here right so the uh, the email feed lets you enter single or multiple email ids depending on the attribute whether you specify the multiple attribute or not clear is it clear okay, yes right now Okay, when you're giving this multiple okay specification make sure that it is i mean uh, so given with a spacing now name is equal to emails are given without giving a space if i give this multiple it will not work properly right Okay, we'll go to the next control. And next you have text area. That is when you want to accept multiple lines of text. Now a text box allows you to enter a single line of text. You can specify the length. Let's say you can specify the size as 50. Okay, it will accept, it will allow you to enter 50 characters. Then suppose you want to accept multiple lines of input, for example, an address. So your address may consist of three or four lines. That is your street name, I mean your A, I mean your flat number, street name, and then pin code. It can come up to three or four lines. So I can't use this text field. You can use this text area control. So the text area control will let the lets you specify the input in multiple lines. You can control how many lines okay you want to display. You want to accept with the rows attribute.
Okay, here you see. And display the reload. Right. So here, let's say I've given rows is equal to four, calls is equal to thirty. Okay. That means four lines will be visible, and in each line you can enter thirty characters. Now, for example, let's say I can enter. If I enter more than four lines. automatically i'll get the horizontal scroll bar and in every line i can enter a maximum of 30 characters okay when i enter more than 30 characters it will be wrapped to the next line right so you control how many lines it will display and how many characters can be entered in each line with this rows and calls attribute clear Okay, right now. so for creating a text area you have a separate text area tag it doesn't come under this input tag then when you want to accept let's say only numeric values we use the type as number right so input type is equal to number in this you can also specify the minimum value and then the maximum value so i can enter and then you can give this a default value with a value attribute step is equal to 2 that is you will be automatically getting this up and uh, let's say down slider so when you click on this slider okay when i want the values to be incremented by uh, let's say a value of 2 i can give this step right so here i have created a number control age i have given the minimum as 18 and maximum as 60 step is equal to 2 Okay, now here you see age. You'll be getting the spin button. Now when I click on this, see first I entered eighteen. So if I uh, click the top button, it will increment it. See it is incrementing it by two. When I click the down uh, the, the button, it will decrement. Okay, but it cannot go beyond the minimum value. And here 
I can enter. So I can use the spin boxes to enter the to give the values or if I want, I can also enter the values directly. Right. OK, now and one more thing is when I enter the value directly, I given the maximum as 60. Now when I try to enter 80, it will not accept it when I try to submit. See, it says value must be less than or equal to 60. And if I try to enter a value which is lesser than the minimum value, minimum I've given 18. Now I try to enter a value. Again, it says must be greater than or equal to 18. So the HTML will automatically uh, ensure that the values you enter is between the uh, range which you have specified. Clear? So you can directly enter the values or you can use the spin control to increment or decrement the value. Right now. Over. Now, when I want to accept her. Date. See, when I click this portion, either I can go and enter the date, month, year, or I can click on the small button, I'll get a calendar. Okay, so the now the current month is September 2022. I get the calendar for this month, and then the current date, the today's date, will be highlighted. Right. So if I want to select a date from, let's say, August, I can click on this. Okay. Up arrow, I'll get a date in August. Okay. Then I can click the down arrow. So when I want to select a date, let's say in October, I can click on this down arrow. Then suppose, let's say, I want to select a month control. Okay. So here I can click, I can select any month I want. Let's say, select. Jan, right? Okay. The I can select any date. Then, when I click on the calendar control, when I click on the year, I will be able to select, let's say, this 
years. Here I can go to the up arrow. I'll be able to select any year I want. Suppose I want to enter, let's say, 2019 or 18. Okay, I can uh, click. I can, let's say, scroll up or down. And then I'll be able to select it. And for this one, you can say give the minimum date. So minimum date I have given 2019. Okay, so you can't go beyond 2019. Let's say the assume that the company has started uh, on 2019 six ten. Okay, so I don't want to allow the date before that. Okay, now I can click on this year icon, so I can um, scroll up. I can select 2019. Okay, 2019. You see these months are disabled. So because here I have given May. Okay, I say June. 22. I can select any date. Fine. So now what I've done is this is the date picker. I'm selecting the date from this. And then immediately what I'm doing is I'm displaying it in a text box below this. So how this is being done? So I've written a small piece of JavaScript code. So here I've written on input is equal to result.value. I've given the ID as result for this text box near the submit button. So whenever you change the input value, now I select 2021, I select the date, right? Whenever the input is modified, I'm given on input result.value is equal to date.value. So I'm changing the value of this text box with a date that has been selected here. Right now, one more thing is since I've given the minimum date as 2009, 10th, okay, June 2019. Then I try to enter. See, instead of here also, I can go and enter. It is like a text box. Now, instead of this, I say 2019 June. I can select one, uh, only a date after 2019 June. Now here suppose I go and say 01. That is January. When I try to submit. Okay. So then, uh, So value must be, okay, this uh, 2019 July or later, right? So once you can specify the minimum date, you can specify the maximum date, right? So it will be automatically validated before the value is submitted. Clear? Any doubts you have? Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Great. And one more uh, important this thing. Now here in this text box, I've selected it from the date from the date picker. Now if I want, I can go and edit this before submitting. I want, uh, I don't want the user to edit this value in this text box. So I can say, what I can do is I can put this attribute read only. When I give this read only specification, the value in that text box cannot be edited. You try to modify, it don't allow you to edit the value in the text box. Right? So 
I can make it read only so that the whatever value that is selected in the picker, okay, you can manipulate it only through the code. The user will not be able to alter this date. Clear? Hello, I've reconnected. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Fine. Right on. Finished? Are we finished writing? Okay, next we'll start with a checkbox control. So we'll be creating the check the checkbox control. In a scenario where you want to give multiple options to the user and you want to allow multiple selection. Now, suppose let's say you're creating a website for an educational institution. 
and let's say you're uh, let's say you're teaching up to 10 courses you want to display the name of all the 10 courses and you want to let the student select any number of courses or all the 10 courses in that situation you create check boxes for all the 10 courses. So when you create a checkbox, I will be able to choose any a single value or multiple value, or if I want, I can also select all the values, right? Now let's say when you want to, or the user in an e-commerce site, let's say somebody wants to buy a shirt, a particular brand of t-shirt, you're displaying the colors, let's say blue, green, red, let's say you're displaying some six colors and somebody wants to buy all the six colors, okay, you would, and you want to allow the, the person to select all the colors, you can create checkboxes. So the checkbox allows a single selection, multiple selection, and it also lets you select all the options given. Clear? Okay, suppose let's say a company wants to know uh, how you came to know about that. Let's say about uh, the company. So let's say they're giving the options. How did you hear about us? Instagram, Facebook, a search engine, or Google, word of mouth. I can select a single option or I can also select multiple options. Right? And now if you look at the appearance of this, okay, it is quite different. From four different to see what is it? Tell me what is the difference between the you see any difference? Tell me. So here in this example, I've used a field set. Okay, so what do you mean by let's say a field set? A field set can appear within a form. So within the field set, you can give a legend that is a heading that, that will appear at the top and you will have a border surrounding all the elements around the field set. Now suppose let's say in a particular form, I want to group it into three different forms. Okay, one for personal details. Okay, one for professional details, experience, etc. I can create three different field sets within the form. Okay, every field set will have something called as a legend, which can be considered as a heading that will be displayed. Okay, and then you will have a box surrounding the elements in the field set. So if all the elements you include in the field set will be surrounded by the box. Okay, then uh, you can give, let's say, the submit button. And after closing the field set, if I want, I can add another field set also. Right? And in, in the field set, you can give the DIV to, uh, let's say, separate each label and the control in a separate DIV. Because why? Because you will be able to access the field set element, legend, and DIV in CSS and you'll be able to apply any type of styles you want, right? So when you use a field set and when you create the HTML elements, it will be easier for you to style them using the CSS, clear? Clear? Okay, try it
over okay so when you look at this example so within a form okay i have two different field sets so i've grouped uh, let's say two text box the first two text boxes under the head personal information and then the contact information in two different field sets right so like this you can have multiple field sets okay and let's say in one uh, html page you can create uh, let's say it can give a look of multiple forms but it is actually a single form with let's say two or three sub forms so you can create let's say sub forms within using this field set within a single form clear and it will also be easier to style the form using field sets right now so you give the form tag and then you can give the field set once you have described all that for sub form close the field set then you can open another field set tag and give the next set of html elements in that field set clear and all the individual field set should be given within a single form tag normally in a html let's say one html file can only one form should be given within that you can have as many field sets as you want next we will see how to style the field set with css fine so in the style sheet i have given for the margin and padding i am setting it to 0 and i am setting the font globally for all the elements and here i have given let's say within this container 
and then the div i have given right so for the div i have given the margin bottom as 10 pixel so you see the label and the text box are let's say placed one below the other with a good margin so instead of getting overlap right so if i want let's say i can increase the margin also that is why you need to enclose all the label and text boxes within the div right so if i want i can increase the margin so div and for the container for the form i have given the maximum width okay and the automatic margin labels i'm giving the width as 120 pixel okay then text boxes and legend i'm giving a padding field set i've given a background right so it appears with a background so this is a simple style sheet to style and you have to compulsory include the label and the text box values every text box within a div then only you will be able to get this bottom margin and then only will be you will be able to space it out correctly right Scroll down.
over. So I can increase or decrease the width of all this text boxes. Okay. By with the size element. So see for the and I'll make it unique. May not for the date control. Okay, it displays it by default. For all the text controls, you can set the width. Right? So add the size attribute to manipulate the width of the text boxes. Clear? Is it clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this we have finished. Next, we'll come to radio buttons. They are also called as option buttons. Okay, <laughs> the radio buttons allows only a single selection. Now, for example, let's say when you're uh, running, a, let's say the flight booking travel agency and you're asking the customer which class is it first class business class economy class in this case i cannot allow multiple selection so when you book a ticket in a flight it is either it should be first class or business class or economy class so let's say you need to go for the radio button radio button allows you to select only a single value among a group of option <laughs> so this i've styled with a style sheet okay and then for the button and input uh, let's say and then the labels i have uh, use this over see when you move the mouse pointer okay it automatically it overs okay so this you can apply the setting with a cursor pointer i've added it for the button label and then for the input also right so it will be easy for you to look at and when you want to select a particular option you can see you can select only one option among the three radio buttons you can either select it by clicking on the button radio button inside or by just clicking on this label i'll be able to select it. right so for the uh, i have given the margin okay and then for the form and the form prompt okay i've done the styling right
So you can create a submit button this way also. So you can say input type is equal to submit and you can create a submit button or you can also say button type is equal to submit. Okay. Then you have a selection list. That is, you can create a drop down list in HTML and then by you can give multiple options. Suppose, let's say you want to give, I mean, more than, uh, I mean, uh, 10 options. When you group it under a checkbox or a radio button, it will occupy a lot of screen space. Then what you can do is you can create a drop down list like this and then you can add all the options. Okay, now especially let's say when you are uh, designing, let's say, a pizza delivery form and you want to giving a listing of all the toppings, 10 to 15 options you want to give, you can give the selection list. Fine. You can set the size. Okay, then... When you say multiple, it will also allow multiple selection. To select multiple items, select one item, hold down the control key and click on all the other items you want to select. Or if you want to select the items continuously, you can hold the shift key. I select this mango, I click here. Everything in between, 
will be selected. Then you can also, I've given size is equal to four. Suppose I say only size is equal to one. Only one item will be displayed at a time. Right? You have to scroll and see. So normally we set it to a value of four or five. And it will add a scroll bar. Four items will be displayed when you give more than four options. You will display a vertical scroll bar. You can scroll down and look at the remaining options. Clear? Since I have given this multiple, it allows you to select multiple options. If you remove this, if you can select only one option from the list. Right? Right now. Over. Next, we will come to the color input. Okay, when you say input type is equal to color, it will display a picker you will be able to select a color right and the hexadecimal code of the color is being displayed on the text box next to it now just a minute i'll display an image here
take a picker and if i want to select a color from the image i'll be able to do it see i uh, exactly i point to this shade of blue right that will be selected automatically so using the picker you will be able to select any color okay from any element in the html page right so to copy the hexadecimal value i have added the result field i have written a small javascript code and i also make this create one link so take this picker or i can select any color and then i can pick up any shade so if i want to select a color from the image take the picker and then pick the color right is it clear to everyone is it clear yes ma'am and you will be having your exam on wednesday next week right it will be an online exam with uh, multiple choice questions i'll complete your syllabus by 20th fine okay we'll wind up with this today so go through all this if you have any doubts you can ask me to uh, in on monday right ma'am how many questions will there be i think it will be 60 questions okay ma'am thank you okay so uh, try to prepare over the weekend and you can submit your uh, assignments you can just put it in the whatsapp or group right okay ma'am 